like these looters. We are going on our path, and suddenly some attraction for some objects happen in our mind, or some repulsion from some object. So we lose sight of our goal. They are as though looters who jump on us and distract us and loot away our peace, loot away our happiness, loot away our spiritual wealth. They are ragad dvesha. But when we make friendship with this ragad dvesha, when we keep on contemplating on them, when we keep on thinking about them, then this ragad dvesha gets converted into calm and krodh. Desire, craving, it starts with liking, but then slowly it becomes craving and intense uh, desire. Intense desire means I feel that without, uh, without this object or without this uh, attaining this object, I will never be happy. So it's an intense urge. It goes beyond my control. Hmm. And that urge, strong urge, propels the person into activity. When the desire comes, person cannot sit quiet. Person cannot sit and meditate. There is no peace. All the sat sattva gun disappears. Actually, rajogun, sattva gun, tamogun, they are, they are opposed to each other. If sattva gun is there, rajogun and tamogun stays behind far. If rajogun comes, sattva gun and tamogun stays far away. And tamogun comes, these two go. So they are opposed to each other. Still they are there together, but they are opposed to each other. So when this rajogun comes or this karma comes, peace goes away, happiness goes away, quietitude goes away, understanding goes away. Because our wisdom, understanding is also an expression of sattva gun. Understanding goes away. Person becomes restless and he wants to fulfill that desire. So the entire body, mind, intellect, everything gets activated to fulfill that desire. At times the desire gets fulfilled, then that karma gets converted into greed. I had explained last time also. When our desires get fulfilled, we feel very happy, so we want to repeat that experience. That attitude to repeat experience is called greed. Hmm. Because we want to repeat. So, if desires get fulfilled, we want to repeat. That is called greed. And if desires don't get fulfilled, then we get angry. We are frustrated. We start disliking, hating and all, whatever obstacle comes, we just cannot tolerate it. So that energy of desire gets converted into anger. Again, if our desires get fulfilled, then again we compare ourselves with other persons around. Because our attitude is outgoing. We are looking out. Whenever Rajagun is there, people are looking out. Sattvagun, we look in. We are looking at our own self. Rajagun, we are looking out. So when we are looking out, we see other people around. And when we see other people around, we compare. Someone has got more than me, someone has got less than me. One who has got more than me, De, uh, creates that person or that situation creates a sense of jealousy in me. I feel jealous. I have, but that fellow has got more. So it creates jealousy, definitely. Unless I have love for that person, it creates jealousy in me. If somebody has got less than me, it creates a pride. Inner. Pride me under he under muskurata hume. Merko dollar do mile usko eki mila. It creates pride. Hmm. So either way, pride is also bad, jealousy also bad. But pride is actually we feel happy. Little bit the sensation is good. 
But in jealousy, the sensation is bad, negative. But both are negative. Hmm, both are negative only. But in the world, people uh, think pride is better or they have um, respect for pride. Though pride, spiritually speaking, is not good. Parents and all encourage, ah, yes, you did well. I saw them, kitni jalan ho gaye hamare padosi mein. Then you came first. Very good child, very nice. Pride, your pride is somebody else's jealousy. Anyway, these are all mathematics of emotions. Very interesting. So here Bhagavan says, Kama Esha Krodha Esha Rajoguna Samad Bhavaha. This is Kama and this is Krodha, which is born from Rajogun and it creates Rajogun. And how are this Kama and Krodha? Maha Ashanaha and Maha Papma. Two important things Bhagavan says about the nature of this Kama and Krodha. The nature of Kama is it is Maha Ashanaha. Means it is a great eater. It is a very, what you call a voracious, no? that term, I don't know, eater. It eats. Means as soon as your one desire is fulfilled, another desire comes up. A des or the same desire becomes more aggravated. The desires never get fulfilled or never feel satisfied by fulfilling them. When they are fulfilled, at that point when it is fulfilled, there is an experience of happiness. But very next moment, I want more. I want more. So it is always hungry. It's a great eater. It never says enough. Hmm. Later on, Bhagavan will call it fire, like fire. Fire also never says enough. The more fuel you put, the more it burns. Put more, more it burns. There are certain uh, you know, fires which are kept alive. Like great yogis and all, they have this dhuni. So they light some fire and their disciples and all keep on uh, putting more and more uh, fuel in it and they can maintain it for years together. There are some fires which were kindled by some yogis some so many hundred years, two hundred, four hundred years ago. Even now they are burning. How? By putting some more fuel. So desire is like fire, and when we fulfill them, it is like putting a fuel into that fire. Again it gets excited. Again you put some fire. Again it gets excited. So it goes on. Therefore Bhagavan says, it is maha ashanaha. It is a great eater. And this desire, whenever it gets obstructed, it gets converted into Krodha. Whoever obstruct or whatever obstruct, Krodha comes. We may not express it because of our other, uh, uh, what you call, uh, uh, what you call that, uh, our habit or our, our wisdom and all. Sometimes we may not express it, but it comes out. Whether that other person obstruction is whether a stranger or whether your own friend, or whether your own parents, or whether your teacher, or whether God, it doesn't matter. Desires obstructed, anger. Bhagavan be ho samne. People get annoyed. At times their desires are not fulfilled, they think God is after me, so they remove all his murtis and all and keep it outside. Hariya, kis ne rakha hai garden mein Hanuman ji ko? Organize Bhagavan ko, Shiv ji ko. No, I am very angry with them. One child, one person told Lord Shiva that please fulfill my desire immediately. Nothing happened for a week or two. Then he went to the, uh, some nearby temple, picked up one Ganesh ji ki murti and he kept it in his locker and he again told Lord Shiva that aapka beta mere kabze mein. <laughs> anyway, so people get annoyed with God also. <laughs> Krodha, doesn't matter. So Mahashanaha, Ashanaha, Mahapapma, a great sinner 
and a great eater, this calm and krodha, and once it arises, nobody can do anything. They become totally overpowering. See, when it is ragad dvesha, likes and dislike, we have control over it. When it is attachment, there also a little bit control is there. But once it gets converted into this intense karma, then a person starts losing all control. Because the sattva gun goes away, control is possible only if sattva gun is there. Sattva gun goes away, so who can control? Gunda Raj. Hmm. Everything is then Gunda Raj only. So Mahashano Mahapapma Vidhi Enam Iha Vairinam. So on this path of spirituality or in this world also, understand that this calm and krodha are or is the enemy. He equates both as one only. So calm and krodha is the main enemy. Vairina. And that is what propels a person to commit sin. So based on our likes and dislikes, based on our thinking, we, based on what we encourage, when we encourage likes and dislikes, it gets converted into karma krodha. When we don't come under their sway, then they are kept at bay, they are kept aside. But when we encourage them by thinking about them, then they get converted into calm and krodha. Like uh, Ravan, he was sitting in his darbar and that his sister came and told him that uh, there is one beautiful lady in the forest and you might like her. So he had already some attraction for uh, women and all. So when she started describing, he started contemplating on it. And that created karma in him. And once that karma came, then it was not possible for him also to overcome it. So he got totally destroyed. So after explaining this karma and krodha, uh, Bhagwan tells us how exactly this karma and this karma krodha creates an obstacle or why it is called an enemy. He says in the next verse, Dhume na vriyate vannihi Yathadarsho malena cha Yathol be na vrito garbhaha Tathate ne damavritam he says that just as this fire is enveloped by smoke and just as the mirror gets covered by dust or as the embryo gets covered by the womb, in the same way this desire or this anger covers knowledge. That Bhagwan will explain in next verse also. So this covers that. This covers that means this calm or this krodha covers knowledge, covers our wisdom. Knowledge means whatever one has gained through satsang, that's called their knowledge. So that knowledge, that wisdom which we have gained, that wisdom has not become our prakriti. It has not become our second nature. Therefore, they are, it is hanging at a superficial level. And that is guiding us. It is at our conscious and subconscious mind. But these uh, desires are deep or they are arise from the prakriti and all, which are much deeper in the unconscious mind. So when we are overpowered by this calm and krodha, they cover the knowledge. And when knowledge being covered itself is trouble. When wisdom gets covered, that is the beginning of trouble. So how does this cover this knowledge? He says the three examples are given, like smoke covering fire. See, when there is fire, there is smoke also. 